Hey guys, it's Saga and in this video, we are going to compare the iPhone 15 with the iPhone 14 and see which one should you get. Now when we look at what both these phones offer, for a few people who use their phone a lot, the choice is going to be as simple as choosing between day and night, while for a few others, the choice might not be as simple. But don't worry, we are going to look at all the similarities and differences between them and I'm sure that will help you narrow your choices much better. And in the end, I will tell you which is my favorite one and that is going to be the one which I feel everyone trying to make this choice should go for. Before we begin, let me make one thing very clear. This video is not for someone who already has the iPhone 14. You must be looking at all the iPhone 15 videos and might be wondering whether you should upgrade as well and the short and straight answer for you is no. You already have a very good phone which runs just as smoothly as the day you got it and if you ask me, I think you guys should be using your iPhone 14 for at least another 3-4 to four years if not longer. This video is intended for someone who might be using an iPhone 11 or any of the other phones from before that because that is the upgrade cycle you guys should be on. Buy a good phone and use it for 4 years at the very least and maybe then look at getting a new one. Look, in the end it is your money and I am not going to tell you where you should spend it. So if you still want to get the iPhone 15 or if you just want to check out what it offers over the iPhone 14, you can continue watching the video. What got most of you in this situation is the price of both these phones. Because let's face it, if price was not an issue, everyone would be walking around with iPhone 15 Pro Maxes in their pocket and no one would even look at the regular iPhones. But we live in a price sensitive market, so we have to give their prices a fair amount of discussion. After all, that is going to help us determine which one offers a better value for your money. So right now, when I'm editing this video, the base 128GB storage variant of the iPhone 15 is going for 65,000 rupees and the same storage variant of the iPhone 14 is available at 59,000 rupees. So a difference of just 6,000 rupees, which is not that huge in my opinion. And I feel like someone who is looking to spend 60,000 rupees on the iPhone 14 can somehow manage to get the extra amount and go for the iPhone 15 as well. So if you look at the price alone, I don't think there is enough of a difference between the two. And if you are willing to wait another 2 months or so, you could be getting both these phones at an even steeper discount. Yes, right now this iPhone 15 does cost a bit more and it does offer a few more features for that extra price. Let us start with the design. Now someone who is looking at both these phones from a distance might think that they look exactly the same and they won't be entirely wrong. Both these phones have pretty much similar silhouettes, similar camera placement and even the buttons and ports are at the exact same placement. But when you hold them closer, you will start noticing the differences. First one being, the glass on the back of the iPhone 15 has a frosted finish as opposed to the glossy back on the iPhone 14. This one change alone makes the iPhone 15 look and feel a lot more premium compared to any of the previous non-pro iPhones. I have never liked a glossy back on any of the phones. It looks good maybe just for a few minutes when you take the phone out of the box but soon after, it starts gathering all sorts of fingerprints and smudges which makes it look awful. To take care of that, I have always made it a point to use a matte protector on the back of all of my iPhones. This also makes them look and feel much better. Thanks to this year's design choice, I no longer have to do that on the iPhone 15. However, I do prefer the back color options of the iPhone 14 which are slightly brighter and more saturated. iPhone 15 has a more pastel color lineup which looks good but I wish there were slightly more saturated color options to choose from as well. This is my personal opinion and I'm sure some people might like the colors of the iPhone 15 more and that is completely fine, it's just a matter of preference. The second design difference is a bit subtle to notice. While the aluminium frame running around the phone is still flat and this phone can still stand on its own, the front and back edges of this frame are now a bit rounded giving the frame overall softer look and feel. This little change makes holding the iPhone 15 for long hours a much more comfortable experience. It is a bit difficult to show this to you on video but if you guys prefer to use your phone without a case, you will really appreciate the slightly softer corners. This obviously won't be an issue if you are using a case with your phone which I think everyone should. Buying an iPhone is a huge investment and the cost of repairs in case of a damage are huge at least in India even if you have Apple Care protection plan. So the easiest way to protect your investment is by putting a good quality case on it. That gives me a perfect segue to talk about this video's sponsor, MacBag. They make silicon cases for smartphones with some of the strongest MagSafe magnets built in. This case has a very soft touch feel to its back which feels amazing and provides a ton of protection to your phone. I have it in black color but it is available in a lot of color options. You can attach various MagSafe accessories to the back of this case like this MagBag wallet. It will attach firmly to the back of your phone and you can not only store your cards or cash in this wallet but it also acts as a kickstand when you want to place your phone down. The finger loop at the back of this wallet helps you grip your phone better. You also get this small Mac stick with your case and with this you can attach your phone to any surface of your liking. Along with iPhones, MacBag makes these cases for Samsung and Google flagship smartphones as well. A link to this MacBag case is in the description section and don't forget to use the code TW15 for a 15% discount on your order. The next change or difference between these two phones is at the bottom. Just like all iPhones for the last decade, 
iPhone 14 also comes with a lightning port for charging and data transfer. But on the iPhone 15, this port has been now replaced by a USB Type-C port. Well, this is a step in the right direction as sometime in the near future, all portable electronic gadgets will get a USB Type-C port and it will be just easier to carry around one charger and cable to charge all of your devices. But right now, it could be a bit of inconvenience if you still have a lot of other devices with a lightning port. The final major difference between these two phones can be seen at the front when you turn their displays on. iPhone 14 gets a notch at the top to hide the front-facing camera and the Face ID tag behind it. On the iPhone 15, we have thin and even bezels on all sides and now we get a dynamic island instead of a notch which was first introduced on the Pro iPhones in the previous year. This dynamic island brings along a host of new features and animations. If you guys are interested about what all this dynamic island can do, let me know in the comments and I will try to make a brief video about it. I don't know about you guys, but to me the dynamic island looks more modern. It's also a lot more fun to see and interact with compared to a normal notch which basically has been there since the iPhone 10. On the iPhone 13 and 14, it's just a bit smaller now. I also feel that Dynamic Island now makes your iPhone 15 look more like a pro iPhone from the front. What do you guys think? That is it for the physical changes which differentiate both these phones. Since we have already looked at it for a bit, let us talk about the displays next. Both of them get 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED displays with 60Hz refresh rate and support for HDR10 and Dolby Vision. Yes, 60Hz still, and you know what? It doesn't really matter to 90% of the people who are planning on getting either of these phones. I do wish that we got higher refresh rate displays at this price, but the fact that we don't doesn't really take away anything from the overall experience of using either of these phones. If you feel really strongly about not having 120Hz refresh rate, then you can go for the Pro iPhones, you have that option. Alright, the display on the iPhone 14 gets 800 nits of typical brightness and 1200 nits of peak brightness. Well, the one on the iPhone 15 gets 1000 nits of typical brightness and 2000 nits of peak brightness. What all this means is, iPhone 15's display can get much brighter than the iPhone 14. Now this might not be very obvious when you are using both these phones indoors, but it is very noticeable when you are outdoors. That being said, both of these are excellent displays. The color reproduction, contrast ratio, viewing angles, everything is excellent on both. If you like to consume a lot of content on your phone and you want a bigger display, both these phones offer a plus variant with larger displays, so you might want to check those as well. Overall, the displays on both these phones are really good. But if you use your phone outdoors a lot, then I think you should go with this iPhone 15. And again, I think the dynamic island makes this display look a lot better. Both of them get stereo speakers, and the difference is small, but ones on the iPhone 15 sound a bit fuller and deeper, while the ones on the iPhone 14 sounded a bit sharp. What I mean to say is, iPhone 15's stereo speakers have a bit more range according to my ears. So if you like to take your phone calls on speakerphone or if you like to listen to your music on your phone without earphones, then I think you will appreciate the speakers on the iPhone 15 a bit more. Now let's check out the internal hardware of both these phones. iPhone 14 comes with Apple's A15 Bionic chip, which is built on 5nm architecture, has 5 core GPU, 128, 256 or 512 GB of internal storage and all these storage options are paired with a 6 GB of RAM and 3279 mAh battery iPhone 15 comes with A16 Bionic chip, which is built on 4 nanometer architecture, has 5 core GPU, 128, 256 or 512 GB of internal storage, and again, all of this storage is paired with 6 GB of RAM, and it gets a 3349 mAh battery to keep everything powered. Both these phones pack in a ton of power and can run anything you can throw at it without even breaking a sweat. If you don't know this yet, performance is never an issue on iPhones. Both of them feel equally quick at opening and running the apps iPhone 15 has a bit more things running in the background as its processor is a bit faster. Like when using the camera, its sensor captures 48 megapixel worth of details, which is 4 times more than the iPhone 14, and this phone takes pretty much same time to process the images as the iPhone 14, which means it is performing a lot more computations in the background. And at the same time, it is also a bit more power efficient, which means its battery lasts a bit longer. Although their performance might sound similar at this point, I know for certain that iPhone 15 is going to hold on to its performance for a couple of more years compared to the iPhone 14. So if you are getting a phone with the idea of using it, let's say for the next 4 or 5 years, then I think going with the iPhone 15 would be the wiser choice. Turning our attention to the battery, I feel both the phones provide very good battery backup. On the iPhone 14, I get anywhere between 6 to 6.5 hours of screen on time on a single charge, while on the iPhone 15, I get close to 7 hours or sometimes even more on a single charge. Now this would obviously vary depending on what apps you are using, but in any case, both these phones will give you a day's worth of battery life even if you are a heavy user. If you are a gamer or if you think that you are going to need a bit more battery, then you can go with the plus variants of either of these phones as they also pack in a much larger battery. When it comes to charging, both the phones support same charging speeds. They can go from 0 to 50% in half an hour with a 20W or faster charger and reach 100% in little over an hour and 30 minutes. 
This is nowhere as fast as most of the Android smartphones. And even with the USB Type-C port, I was expecting Apple to give us something close to 45W fast charging, but we did not get that. And the USB Type-C port on this phone doesn't unlock any great new features. It is just stuck at USB 2.0 speeds, so no fast charging or faster data transfer, same as the Lightning port. And as I said at the beginning, right now, this new port only gives us the option to maybe use one unified charger with all of our devices sometime in the near future. Both these phones also support wireless charging, and if you are using any normal Qi wireless charger, they can be charged at 7.5W speeds. But with a MagSafe or a Qi 2 enabled wireless charger and a 20W power brick, you can charge them wirelessly at 15 watts. Software-wise, there is not a lot which separates both these phones. Right now, they are running on the latest version of iOS 17, and about 98% of the features are similar on both the phones. They will both be getting iOS 18, but since both of them have less than 8GB of RAM, they will be missing out on all the Apple intelligence features. Hopefully, Apple will somehow find a way to at least make Siri a bit smarter on both these phones with the new iOS updates in September or October. Don't let the lack of Apple intelligence features distract you from the fact that both these are amazing smartphones and they can handle any apps or games that you can throw at them for years to come. Software update-wise, iPhone 15 should be getting one extra year of support compared to the iPhone 14. In any case, you can easily expect both these phones to get at least 4 or 5 more major software updates. Now, one of the software features that is different on the iPhone 15 is inside the camera. Since the main camera at the back of the iPhone 15 gets a 48 megapixel sensor, you get this option at the top right of the camera. When you turn on the JPEG Max option, this phone will let you capture 48 megapixel worth of details from the main camera. Another new feature is this 2x option above the shutter button. Pressing this button will let you take almost lossless 2x zoomed in shots. I have a very dedicated video comparing the cameras on the iPhone 15, 14, and 13 and I have shared a ton of image and video samples in that video. And here are a few more. One of the major differences between these cameras is the iPhone 15 captures noticeably more amount of details in its images. And the HDR shots, which basically were really messed up on the iPhone 12, 13, and 14, now end up looking amazing from all the cameras on the iPhone 15. Yes, if you don't zoom in a lot on your images, or if you take most of your images outdoors during the daytime, then you won't find a huge difference between these images from both the phones. But if you take a lot of your images indoors or after the light has gone down, then you will see much better images from the iPhone 15. It also lets you convert any image with people in it into a portrait shot. I don't know how important this is for you, but if you take a lot of images, this will help your images stand out and look a lot more professional with just a couple of clicks. If you are serious about smartphone photography, or if you are the designated smartphone photographer of your family or the friends group, I think you should really consider getting the iPhone 15. For me, the difference in the HDR shots alone is worth going for the iPhone 15. For a lot more image and video samples, you can watch my dedicated camera reviews of both these phones and also a comparison video between the cameras of the iPhone 15, 14, and 13 from the links in the description section. So with that, we have seen all the similarities and differences between these two phones, and for the price difference of just 6000 rupees, I think the iPhone 15 is certainly a better option. It gets the latest design, dynamic island, better speakers, new processor, much better main camera and greatly improved HDR over all the cameras, better low light images and video capabilities, better battery backup and at least one extra year of software updates. So if you are looking to upgrade from the iPhone 10, 10s, 11, 12 or any of the phones from before that, then go with the iPhone 15 as it will be a much better upgrade for you. And as I said before, if you are already using the iPhone 14, there is absolutely no need for you to go and get this iPhone 15. If you are still confused, you can go back and watch the video again, note down all the features that both these phones offer and see if those are worth the extra money to you or not. Whatever your decision is, let me know in the comments. That is it for this video guys. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel for a lot more quality tech videos like this. You can also check out some of the other videos from this channel. This has been Saga and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.